In this lesson, we'll be looking at a technique that be can be accomplished in design weeks. Specifically, we're looking at reverse applique. So what we're going to learn today is how to create the cutwork files for a reverse applique and then how to do reverse applique. So what is reverse applique? Traditionally, it is a technique where the applique fabric is placed underneath the main fabric. The outline of the design is then stitched, usually with a straight stitch. And finally, the main fabric is cut away, about an eighth of an inch away from, or quarter, from the uh, cut sewn line to expose the applique fabric. This step order could be utilized if you're just using an embroidery machine, but you can't do that with the cutwork tool. Since if we put the uh, applique fabric underneath and stitch the line and then cut it out, it would cut both the uh, main fabric and the applique fabric away, leaving us with a hole. So with the cutwork tool, you cut the shape out first um, of the main fabric, and then you attach the applique fabric. And I have steps later. So let's move on to our software lesson. So I'm going to open up my Bernina DesignWorks software, and I'm going to do a create new file. I'm going to click next. For my fabric, I'm going to choose cotton and choose a light color so I can see it which is what I already have, so I'm going to click Next. I'm going to do this from a file, so I want a dot next to From File. I'm going to hit those three dots, and I'm going to navigate to my Reverse Applique folder and select the heart that I have here. This is just a vector image that I actually created in my version 8 software, embroidery software from Bernina. So I'm going to open it. For my hoop, I want the Bernina Large Oval Hoop with the number 44 C foot because I will be doing cut work. I'm going to click next. It's going to ask me what color of brush I want to use. That's fine, whatever it chooses. I'm going to click finish. And then apparently it accidentally got me double clicking, so it wants to do something. I'm going to hit cancel. Random dialog boxes pop up and you don't know why they came up or if you weren't intending for them to pop up, cancel is always a safe bet. So what I want to do now is I'm going to select my heart and I'm going to go to my object properties and the outline tab which is the pencil I'm gonna say I want to make this cut work I want a running before stitch this is going to adhere the uh, main fabric to my stabilizer and I want an offset of one millimeter so that it won't be right on that cut line then I'm gonna do a running stitch after because it's goes in the order it shows, so it's going to do a running before, then it's going to do the cutting, which is why it says cut offset, then it's going to do another running stitch. I'm going to again put it at one millimeter and that's going to help hold my uh, applique fabric down. <clears throat> there are different styles of running stitches, I'm just using the default. Then I'm going to put a dot, um, check mark next to satin serial because I want to do a satin stitch to uh, close that off or to finish it. But you might notice that there, the only two options I have under satin serial is offset and density. Not anything to do with how wide it is. And if I zoom in, this is a very thin satin stitch because remember this line of stitching right here is a millimeter away. So it's not even a millimeter thick. So to change that, I have to go up to my tool options and find the outline. And I am currently in inches, not millimeters, but I'm gonna do it at 0.1 inches and hit enter and that should cover up my uh, running stitches because I really don't want those showing ideally and it is that easy to create a reverse applique because now I'm ready to save it so I'm gonna click off I'm gonna go to file save as and I'm gonna go ahead and save it in my reverse applique folder and this is a simple reverse applique art Oh wait, and I forgot the reverse. Simple reverse, and I'm gonna save that. Now, one thing you don't need to do is throw away the pieces that you cut out of your main fabric because you can use them as a traditional applique on another project. So let's do that. I'm gonna select my heart and I'm going to copy it. So I'm gonna go to edit at the top, copy. Now I need a new window to paste it into. So I'm gonna do file, new, same fabric is good, so I'm going to click next. I'm going to say I'm going to grab a new graphic, 
same hoop. I'm going to click finish and I'm going to paste. So I'm going to go to edit, paste. And I'm not quite sure why it pasted offset. I'm just going to uh, click and drag it so it's centered. And with this, I want to uh, make it a traditional applique. So instead of doing cut work, I want to go to a running stitch. And for my running stitch, I'm going to select stitch number 31. So I'm going to scroll down till I find 31. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to zoom in. So it's going towards the outside of my heart. Well, I want it to go inside so it will hold it. So I'm going to put a check mark next to mirror style. And then I'm going to put a check mark next to length because I want it slightly bigger. And I'm going to make it 3.5 millimeters length and just makes it a little bit bigger. Now I want to actually make it into an applique because at this point it would just do stitch out a heart, the outline of a heart with this stitch. So I need to add a fill. To add a fill, I have to click on the lower right hand corner of one of the colors in the color palette. Does not matter if I do it in the threads or the brushes. But I'm just going to click in the lower right hand corner. It should fill in with that color. Then I'm going to go back to object properties, click on the paint bucket, which is our uh, fill tab. And because I was in the thread side, it's decided it's applique. That's great, that's what I want. I'm going to put a check mark next to cleaning. And I'm going to say it was laser cut, so it was pre cut before I got there. And it's already, this heart's ready to go, so I'm going to save that. So file, save as, and this is a simple applique heart. But only if you spell it right. There we go. And then finally, we ha I have one more design to show you, and it's a little bit more complex, but it turns out really cool. So we're going to do file new. Same fabric as before. And I double clicked again. I'm going to hit back. We do want from file. We're going to use that same heart as earlier. And I still want the large oval hoop. I'm going to click next and then finish. So I have this heart again. I'm going to select it. And I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to click on duplicate in the tool options. I'm going to put a check mark next to proportional. I'm going to change my width or height, doesn't matter because proportional scaling is locked, to 3, and I'm going to press enter. So I should have two hearts now. I want to select both my hearts, so I'm going to go to edit, select all, and these are some of our transformation tools up here, and I want to select trim, and that's going to give us a shape that, the shape that's yellow is what's giving us. I'm going to click off, select the center heart, and hit delete because I don't need two center hearts. I'm going to select the trimmed heart. I'm going to go to the cut work in my um, object properties. Again, I'm going to do a running before stitch with an offset of uh, one millimeter. I'm going to do a running stitch with an offset of one millimeter. And if I wanted to, I could choose one of the decorative styles down here. And then I'm going to again do a satin serial and once again change my outline to 0.1 and press enter. So I have this really cool heart inside of a heart um, design. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So file, save as, and this is reverse applique double heart. Okay, so let me show you what you can do and or how to do this and different things I've done. So you'll need some supplies. So you need your background fabric, applique fabric, thread, large oval hoop, temporary spray adhesive like 505, your cutwork needle, cutwork needle plate because you will get a much better cut with that, the number 44 C foot, and stabilizer. You want one for hooping and one for floating. So floating is where you adhere stabilizer to the back of the hoop. So first we're going to adhere our background fabric to the hoop stabilizer. So I just sprayed it with 505 and stuck it down. 
then you're going to stitch the running before and a basting box if you so choose. So the machine I was using had a basting box and I did use that. And I know it's hard to see because I'm stitching in white, but there is, I'm doing the double heart. So you can kind of see it there and I do have my basting box turned on. Then you're going to change it to the cut work needle and you're going to cut the four directions. Of course, each direction is its own thread um, stop. Then you're going to spray the stabilizer that you're going to float with adhesive. You're going to attach your applique fabric to your floating stabilizer. And then you attach your prepped applique fabric to the back of the hoop. And here I've actually already taken out my two hearts that were cut. Then I'm going to spray the two pieces of my heart with adhesive. And I'm going to insert actually both of them in to try and accurately place that center heart and then pull out the um, outer heart because that's the part I want the reverse applique to show. Then I'm gonna thread my machine back up for embroidery. I'm going to do the running stitch so everything holds together. And then finally, the satin stitch will um, stitch. As a note, the running stitch here and the satin stitch are all in the same thread change. So if you need to stop it for any reason, like if your center heart's not exactly perfect, you do have to be paying attention. It's not just gonna stop where you can make a adjustment before it does a satin stitch. But at this point, our embroidery is done. So some other hearts I did, um, other versions of my double heart, I did one with uh, uh, black thread. I did one with uh, the net fill, which was an option inside the cutwork area turned on. I did my single hearts and I had a lot of fun using just the same fabric and changing what was background and what was applique. I played with different stitch types. In this one, the one on the right is the stitch number 31. I don't remember which one I used for the one on the left, but it is a stitch inside the software. It's a little scallopy looking one or loopy one. It looks more like loops. And then scraps, again, don't throw them away because you can reuse them for a traditional applique following the um, simple applique heart section of the video. So some other inspirations for projects I've done. Uh, I have two coworkers who are very into Star Wars and pumpkin stencils work great for a reverse applique. Uh, this is of course Darth Vader and he's on the back of a polo. And then I have a stormtrooper for his uh, cohort and uh, conspirator on the back of a different uh, polo. And then you can also use reverse applique and traditional applique together. So on this cardinal, the red is reverse applique, but the uh, yellow, white, and black are all traditionally applique, with the black being on top of everything. So I hope that gave you some ideas of things you can do and that you just take the idea of reverse applique and make something for yourself. Thank you for watching.